In this video, you will learn what's in a LAS, LAS file. We will begin with the LAS format. After that, we will load data in Cloud Compare, and uh, I will say a few words about the global shift concept and the units in Cloud Compare. And at the end of the video, we will have a very quick look to the sample data set. So what is the last file format? Uh, let's see what uh, Wikipedia says about it. The last format is a file format designed for the interchange and archiving of LiDAR point cloud data. It is an open binary format specified by the ASPRS, and the format is widely used and regarded as an industry standard for LiDAR data. The last format is uh, described in the last specification. The last revision of this specification is 1.4 release 15, and it is published by the ASPRS. It is available freely on the web. In the last file, points are described by point data records, and you have several formats descri described in the, in the specification for this record. You have format 0 up to format 10. Here on the screen, you can see the format 0. For each point, you will have the x, y, z coordinates and some attributes which are standardized. The intensity, the return number, the number of returns, scan direction flags, the edge of flight line, the classification, the scan angle rank, and the point source ID. All these attributes will be explained in the video on scalar fields. I will now say a few words about the classification attribute. Depending on the point data record format, uh, the classes may have different meanings. You can see here that we have standardized values for uh, different elements of the, of the scene we are looking at. You see that we have a class corresponding to the ground, to the low vegetation, to the medium vegetation, to the high vegetation. And uh, when you get point clouds that ha has been classified before, you, you can um, find the meaning of the, of the classes in this uh, specification. In point data record format 6 up to 10, the classes are a little bit different, but you still find the ground class as a 2, the low vegetation as a class 3, so the classes are not so different from the point data record formats 0 up to 5. Okay, let's see what happens when we try to open the sample data set in a Cloud Compare. I click here on Open. I select the sample data set here, and I click on Open. Here you, you have the dialog of the OpenLAS file module, and you can decide to import only the attributes of the points you, you want. For instance, here I have selected the classification and the time. You can import all attributes or none of them. In this, in this later case, you will just have points with x, y, z coordinates, but no attributes. In some cases, you can have extended fields. Here we have no none of them. And one very interesting option here is styling. If you check this box here, you can uh, divide your original cloud into uh, many subclouds. Here you will, for instance, divide it into four by four tiles. That means 16 tiles. But be careful, if you do that, you will not load the data into that compare. You will just uh, divide your original cloud into um, several sub subclouds. And in the last thumbnail here, you can get some uh, basic information about the point cloud. You can see here that we have more than 22 million of points and uh, the, the bounding box in X, Y, Z. Let's go to tiling again, and I will launch the, the tiling now. It can be very useful when you have a huge um, data set and, and you want to divide it into uh, almost identical uh, subclouds. If I click on apply now, you will see at the at the end of the of the progress that the tiling will be done, but you will not have any cloud loaded in the interface. It 
it's interesting because we will not crash Cloud Compare by trying to open a too large file. So this is the end of the tiling. If, if I go again here in open, you can see that now I have 16 subclouds near my original point cloud here. So again, I will try to load my uh, original uh, sample dataset and I will remove the tile in open and I click apply. And here you have a very important dialogue which is open, which is the dialog about global shift. The global shift is a shift that is calculated by Cloud Compare to recenter your point cloud around the point zero of the coordinate system. It is done because coordinates in Cloud Compare are coded on 32 bits and the resolution you can get on 32 bits floating number is not the same as uh, the one on 64 or 128 bits floating number. And if you want to keep a good resolution, even if you are using 32 bits floating number, you, you will have to shift them. And uh, Cloud Compare is able to compute automatically uh, an optimized shift. You can see here on the left, a point in the original coordinate system here. And you can here read the shift that has been computed and applied by Cloud Compare. And here you can read the coordinate in the local uh, coordinate system. You can see especially that on the y-axis, the coordinate is zero instead of a, a huge value of more than 5 million meters in, a, in the original coordinate system. You have to know that in Cloud Compare, you have no units. I say meters, but I could say anything else. You have just numbers, and, uh, and Cloud Compare is considering only numbers. As it is said here in the pop up dialog, you can uh, let Cloud Compare compute an optimal global shift, but you can also specify global shifts yourself by placing a text file named global shift list text close to the um, application executable file. And in this case, in, this, uh, in, in the list here, you will get the suggested input as uh, computed by Cloud Compare and some other customized inputs. Here, I will let Cloud Compare compute itself the optimized shift. And then I just have to click yes. What is important is to have this uh, checkbox uh, enabled because when you will store again your cloud on the disk in a specific format, for instance, the LAS, if you want to export your work, you will want to move your cloud around the, or in, in the original coordinate system. And if you click on that, it will be done this way. What is very important is that you, you have to use always the same global shift when you use several clouds if you want to have them recentered in the same way. If you do not do that, you will have several clouds in different places in your uh, display window. Now I click yes, and the points will be loaded in Cloud Compare. And if you click here, on the name of the point cloud in the database tree. You can see that in the properties window, many details has been added on the point cloud. And especially you can read here the box dimensions, the box which uh, contains our point cloud. You can see the shifted box center coordinates, the global box center coordinates, which are quite huge. And you can see here the global shift that has been applied by Cloud Compare to move the original cloud around the point zero of the local coordinate system. Let's have a really quick look at the data. Uh, we have shown here in the properties window many details about the box dimensions, the shifted box center, the global box center, and also the global shift that has been applied by Cloud Compare. And if you go a little further in the properties window, you can see that we have two scalar fields. 
and these scalar fields are corresponding to the attributes we have imported, imported during the, the loading of the point cloud. And you can uh, recognize the two attributes we had chosen, the GPS time, the time, and the classification. All scalar fields will be investigated later in a dedicated video. This is the end of this video about the LAS format. The only difference between LAS and LAS is that the LAS files are compressed, so they take a little bit less place on your disk, but they are a little bit longer to, to load.